Hello, this is Alex from MidiSequencing.com, and today we're going to look at how to hear what your compressor is doing. So a lot of people, when they start mixing, um, it's very difficult to tell if your compressor is working how it should, and you can really screw things up or make things great by knowing what you're doing compressor-wise. It took me a long time to learn how to hear compression accurately. So... I wrote down a few adjectives that can help guide you when you're adding compression. So you want to ask yourself, if it's good compression, if I'm doing good, it should sound fuller or there should be more presence or more clearness. It should be or an evenness, punchiness or glue. That's what you want, how you want to alter the sound if you're adding compression. If you're adding compression and you're doing it poorly, a uh, bad compression will make your sound more dull. It'll make it more lifeless, overly thick. It'll kill the dynamics, be squashed or smashed. Hopefully those words can help guide you. I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. And by the way, we're looking at a whole bunch of famous compressors here, which we'll get to in a minute. First, I'm going to show you the vocal without any compression on here. And whenever you're kind of testing whether or not the compression is good or bad, you're going to want to level match things. So I'm going to turn it up so it'll be similar volumes. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. Okay, and then here it is with the compression I added. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. So what is that doing? What is the goodness in that compression? Why did I add it? To me, what it does is it makes it sound a bit clearer. It's a little more present. The vocal is kind of sitting right there. And it's a little more balanced. So I'm going to play it again. Um... Really, I think where you can really hear it, because it's not a huge change, is these last words here. It definitely, you can, the words are, are clearer and more even sounding. So here it is again without compression. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. And here it is with. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. So it's a slight change, but it's just a bit more even, a bit more present. In order to demonstrate bad compression, I'm going to pull up a different compressor here. A lot of times on my lead vocals, I do use um, this. It's called the 1176. This one's made by SoftTube, and it's Native Instruments Complete Ultimate. That's where you can... That's where they got it. Anyway, so here it is with um, kind of sounding not bad. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. It's a little more squashed, and it's not as clear than with the LA-2A that I had before, but it, it sounds all right. Now I'm going to turn the release on this compressor all the way to the slowest setting which means that the needle on the meter, you'll see it, it stays down and it keeps the compressor on basically really smashing it. And just try and listen to the difference. After, after I play this time, I'm going to A, B it back and forth. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. All right, so to me... The life gets sucked out of it. But let's just go back and forth and see if you can hear the difference. So here it is with a faster release. And I'm just going to go back and forth. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. And that sound to me is just too thick in a, in a bad way. 
it's dull, mostly dull, just lifeless. It's, it doesn't pop at all. But I think it sounds best with the LA 2A. If you love me, darling, don't leave me standing out here in the road. Which most of, a lot of times when I'm compressing the lead vocal, I'll use a 1176. But this time the LA 2A just sounded more clear. And that's why I chose that. So now let's take a look at these famous compressors real quick. It helps when you're learning compression to know which compressors to use in which scenarios because then it, it gets you in the right spot. So the LA-2A that we just used, this is another version by Universal Audio. And the LA-2A is great. It can be great on lead vocals. It can be great on background vocals. It's really good on acoustic guitars and piano. You know, always use your ears, but that type of stuff it's really good for. Um, the DBX-160 down here, here's Universal Audio's version. Here is the Native Instruments version by made by Softube. These, these classic compressors, the 160, um, the LA-2A right here, and the 1176, which we'll get to, which is also pictured down here, plus this very comp, which is, this is another version. These are a great set of compressors to have, either the Universal Audio version or the Native Instruments version. Both are great versions. Um, the Let's get back to the, if you get them, the 160 is really great on percussion. It's great on drums and punchy elements. It can be great on like a punchy bass or a funk guitar maybe. And if you don't have... The version, you know, an LA-2A or a 160 that you can use, you can actually look up what their attack and release times are because they're fixed. They're, you know, you'll see there's no attack or release knob on here. So if you look it up online, you can create kind of your own, you know, version of an LA-2A. It's not going to sound the same, but it'll be close of what the attack and release will be and just save those as um, in your you know, your stock compressor settings, and then you kind of have a version of them. Uh, here we have the FFL bus compressor, and this one is great on your drum bus. It can be great on your master bus. It's just a great bus compressor, hence the name bus compressor. And Ableton has a version of this called the Glue. Use that in the same way you would use the SSL bus compressor. And then there's also the Glue, which is like a plug-in you can also buy. Um... Yeah, so master bus, drum bus, you know, any bus really, uh, try it out. Here is the Fairchild. There's a version of this that comes with uh, Universal Audio stuff, and this is also great for adding uh, thickness and fullness, and sometimes people don't even use the compressor on here because the circuitry has something that, some warmth that adds to the sound. Um, but that's a whole nother story altogether. Here, this this one, you can get full free, the Kotelnikov. And I really recommend you go to, it's made by Tokyo Don Labs. Go to their website. They have a video on how to use this compressor on because it's got some weird settings. But you'll learn not only about compression and how to use this compressor, but you get a free compressor out of it. Um, and it's got a button on here, the delta button. That's really great for learning compression because you hear exactly what the compressor is doing. So if you if you put this on your mix and you press the delta button, you can mess with the attack and, or the release or whatever to kind of dial in what sounds great. Here, the very comp, these guys, two emulations of the same compressor. This is a great bus compressor too that you, it's good for like jazz and maybe film scoring softer type stuff, but super duper good compressor. The 1176, we talked about this baby. Use it on a lot of stuff. For me, it's a really full focused sound. If it's great on guitars, bass, lead vocals, that sort of stuff. And then over here is the Chandler Limited Zener. Zener limiter and it's just the kind of a classic compressor slash limiter used on master buses all over the world so thanks for watching if you want to like or subscribe do that come by maysequencing.com for more stuff have a great day peace